The Highline Trail Hike in Glacier National Park, Montana is one of the most epic hikes in the national park system. In this video, we're gonna talk about a couple different route options and travel options to be able to do this hiking trail in Glacier National Park. And I'm also gonna talk about our hiking experience and what I would have changed to make this a little bit more desirable of a hike. It is an amazing hike, don't get me wrong, but based on weather conditions and the route that you choose to do, you might have a better experience. While you're here, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of our fun travel adventures. All right, let's dive into this video about hiking the Highline Trail in Glacier National Park. First, I'm gonna show you where this hiking trail is. It is located in the central area of Glacier National Park. If you're taking the Going to the Sun Road, you're gonna go up to Logan Pass, and that is the most common trailhead for this hiking trail. The first route I would like to show you leaves from Logan Pass. You're gonna cross the street from the big parking lot and that's where the trailhead is. You'll see a big sign that says Highline Trailhead. And shortly after you begin this route, you will come to a section that has a steep drop off down to going to the Sun Road. So if you are afraid of heights, you're not gonna make it very far starting on this hiking trail, unless you're in thick fog like we were when we started this hike. And in that case, you can't see the steep drop and what is <laughs> immediately below. So it might be a little less scary for you. The first two and a half miles of this hike are a gradual upgrade. Uh, once you get closer to Haystack Pass, about two and a half miles in, it'll turn into a little steeper incline and that's the biggest uphill section of this hike. Once you make it through Haystack Pass, you're not going up or down too, too much until you make it over to the Granite Park Chalet. From the Granite Park Chalet, if you're continuing along this route option, you're gonna head southwest along the Granite Park Trail and take that hiking trail downhill all the way to the Loop, which is right on going to the Sun Road. So you're taking a one-way hike, very important information, if you're hiking route option one, starting at Logan Pass, and then hiking the Highline Trail down to the Loop, you are doing a one-way hike from Logan Pass down to the Loop. So you need a ride back up to Logan Pass. Um, there are a couple things you can do here. If you're staying in West Glacier, I think the best option for you will be to park at the loop with your vehicle, then take the shuttle. There's a shuttle system that runs through Glacier National Park. In 2021, you needed reservations, so check my link in the description under this video for information about the shuttles. Um, but you will need a shuttle ride from the loop up to Logan Pass. From there, you can hike from Logan Pass all the way back down to the loop where you parked your vehicle earlier in the day, and then you can take your vehicle back. If you are staying in the eastern side of the park, I would recommend parking your vehicle at the St. Mary Visitor Center, taking a shuttle from St. Mary Visitor Center up to Logan Pass, then you're gonna hike starting from Logan Pass all the way down to the loop, hop on a shuttle from the loop up to Logan Pass again, and from Logan Pass, you have to make a transfer to the shuttles that go to the eastern side of the park. So you'll transfer onto a different shuttle that will take you back to St. Mary. And that sounds really complicated, but it's pretty simple when you do it in person. <laughs> that is what we did. We took a shuttle from St. Mary up to Logan Pass, and then hiked the trail to the loop, took the shuttle from the loop up to Logan Pass, and then switched shuttles from Logan Pass back to St. Mary, where we could then drive back to our campground. I do not recommend trying to take your vehicle up to Logan Pass. It is totally full parking lot by 6.30 a.m. It is a very, very hectic parking lot and it will add stress to your day. If you get there after 6.30 a.m., sometimes even before that, the parking lot is going to be full. So option one is the path we chose to take when we did this hike for the first time in 2021. If we come back and do this hike again, which I hope we will, option two would have to be my way to go. We start at Logan Pass. It's an out and back trail. It's about 15 miles. You can tack on a little extra mileage if you decide to do the Garden Wall Trail with an overlook of Grinnell Glacier. 
so it's more strenuous, it's a longer hike, and there's more elevation gain. The pros of doing this option are that you don't have to do that boring section of the hike after the Granite Park Chalet, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. Uh, and you also don't have to worry about parking somewhere, taking a shuttle from there to your car, and then hopping on another shuttle and like all that jazz. You're just doing an out and back trail, starting and ending at the same point. Quickly, I'd like to mention that you could still do a shuttle with this option. If you want to avoid parking at Logan Pass, like I recommend, you could just park at the visitor center on either the east or west side of the park and then take the shuttle from there up to Logan Pass. So this hike is the same starting route, except whenever you get all the way out to the Granite Park Chalet, you can from there turn around and come back the way you came. So you're gonna get a full different set of views because you're walking in the opposite direction. And while we're here, I would like to quickly mention a third option for those of you that aren't into a full day strenuous hike. You can start from Logan Pass and just do a little bit of the Highline Trail. Maybe you just want to see that ledge uh, and how scary it is uh, right when you're a quarter mile in on that cliff ledge just uphill from going to the Sun Road and you can hike out as much as you want and hike back. You don't have to do this full hike. And that's a great thing to do. Listen to your body when you do this hike because it is a strenuous hike. You could also park at the loop and just take the Granite Park Trail up to the Granite Park Chalet. But those views aren't quite as amazing as the views from starting at Logan Pass. All right, guys, so those are a few of the options for hiking the Highline Trail. There are a handful of connecting trails that meet off of this trail. So you're welcome to add more to your hike by going on one of those side trails as well. Now I want to talk about our hiking experience and what I could have done to make it a little bit more exciting. Basically just things I learned that would make it more fun next time. So number one, we took the shuttle up to Logan Pass to start this hike. We booked our shuttle ticket reservation for 7 a.m. So we got up to Logan Pass before 8 a.m. And we were in thick fog. We could not see anything. I was so sad. Well, it's 10.15 a.m. And it's still incredibly foggy. Can't see much. And we're going to keep going, but... I think we're gonna have to hike part of this again to show you what the views look like later this afternoon. Finally, once we made it through Haystack Pass, the fog started to lift and we could start to see some of the beautiful scenery all around us. It's 12.45 p.m. and it is now a totally clear, beautiful, sunny, bright day. Woo! And we saw some pika. Another thing I learned while doing this hike is that the views are not that exciting once you get past the Granite Park Chalet. The chalet is pretty cool. You definitely should get there if you can, because this is a little spot where people can uh, sleep overnight. I believe you have to make reservations well in advance if you are going to stay there overnight. Um, but for day hikers, you can stop by there. There's a little snack shop uh, where they have some candy bars and Gatorade and water. There are also our restrooms at the chalet. But once you get past the chalet, if you're taking this route to continue hiking downhill to the loop, uh, where you'll come back to going to the Sun Road, that last section is is downhill most of the way. Um, the views are not as exciting and grand as they are the earlier parts of the hike. Um, and there's just a lot of switchbacks going downhill and it wasn't that exciting for me. Uh, so if I were to do this hike again, I would definitely go with option two that I showed you guys where it's an out and back hike. And I would add that extra bit of the hike to go up the garden wall trail to see the Grinnell Glacier Overlook. This is a longer hike, but we ended up hiking about that much anyway when we first did this hike with option one because we had to redo the first couple miles so I could show you guys what it actually looks like. All right guys, we're doing the Highline Trail two times today. Just kidding, we're just redoing the first part a little bit <laughs> to show you what it looks like when it's not covered in dense fog. All right guys, that wraps up my video on hiking the Highline Trail in Glacier National Park in Montana. 
there are a few different route options so make sure you pick the one that's going to be the best for you and your hiking group this is a great hiking trail for viewing wildlife while we did this hike we saw a pika we saw a deer we saw a bighorn sheep and we saw a marmot and we saw a handful of birds we did not happen to see any mountain goats which this is one of the most popular trails if you want to see mountain goat. And you're also in grizzly bear and black bear country. So you could see one of those guys out there too. So make sure you bring your bear spray when you come to do this hike. If I were to do this hike again, like I mentioned, I would just do the out and back option so that I don't have to take a shuttle from the loop up to Logan Pass. Uh, and I kind of skip that last boring section of the hike. The way that I could avoid the fog would be to book a shuttle pass and do this hike a little bit later in the morning, maybe start at 10 a.m. or start at 11 a.m. Also keep an eye on the weather that morning uh, so you can see if there are foggy conditions up at Logan Pass. This hike took us about six hours to do because we jogged from the Granite Park Chalet down to the loop, basically, because it was downhill most of the time. Um, but in general, they recommend giving yourself six to eight hours to do this hike uh, if you're doing the 11.5-ish miles option one plan. Uh, it may take you even longer to do this hike if you do option two. I have a few other videos about Glacier National Park, including a video about 10 great things to do in Glacier National Park. I have a link for these other videos in the description under this video. I also have helpful links for National Park Service information for Glacier National Park. If you guys have any questions about hiking the Highline Trail, you can leave a comment under this video and I'll get back to you uh, to the best of my knowledge. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Have a great day and happy travels.